Welcome to episode five of Sassy Science, where science is sassy. Hey, Mrs. Green, you know that Beethoven guy? Remember him, the one that uh, the one that uh, composed the all those famous music pieces. Oh yeah, what's going on with him these days? Not much, just decomposing. Ah! <laughs> All right, so before we get started with episode five, go ahead and grab your science notebook. Um, and for my student who pointed out that I needed a manicure, you can clearly say, see that I have not taken care of that yet. Uh, grab your notebook. You're going to need, I think, at least a half a page. I'm going to write very large, so you'll see me using a full page. Um, take a pause. Go ahead and grab that right now. Mrs. Green, what are we going to be talking today, talking about today and taking notes about? Well, since we are talking about uh, grasslands and organisms and things that they must do to survive, those things knows, known as adaptations, I think this is a great time to talk about the fact that there's two different types of an adaptations for organisms. Oh, that sounds great. So, um, a really easy strategy for us to distinguish um, between the two adaptation types that we're going to talk about today is by drawing a simple T-chart. Remember, you can pause us at any time. On one side of our T-chart, we're going to have physical for physical adaptations. On the other side of our T-chart, we're going to have behavioral. Yeah, spelling early in the morning. All right, behavioral and physical adaptations. Let's start over here with physical, Miss Haynes. Hmm. Physical. I'm trying to figure out what the difference between physical and behavioral is. When I see the word physical, I think about maybe our bodies, the way we're made. And when I think about behavioral, I think about our behavior and the things that we do. Is that maybe the difference between them? That is great. And I think it would be a good time to start out with a simple description of physical over here. And that would be... Uh, organisms shape or form okay and then for behavioral we'll jump over to that side real quick and what did you say miss miss Hames behavioral is... um, maybe the the things that they do that help them survive, the things they do that, okay. that help them be able to so, eat and to actions reproduce, actions that enable survival. Okay, let's hop back over to physical and see if we can list a few examples of physical adaptations. And some of the examples we would talk about um, might relate to the grasslands, it could also possibly relate to any other biome. <clears throat> We've been talking about plants recently, um, and plants have a special talent of creating their own energy. How do you think that they do that? What could I list here, Ms. Haynes? Hmm. Well, I'm pretty sure that most plants don't eat stuff, though we have talked about some that do. True. So they have to be able to make their own food. So, in order to make their own food, they have to do photosynthesis. So, in order to do that, they have to have the chloroplasts. Ah, okay. So, that would definitely be a structure, a shape, or a form. Mm -hmm. So... And then, after they make the food, the food flows down the phloem. So, maybe the phloem is something physical about the plant that helps it survive? Definitely. So, I'm going to write that here. P H L O E M. Flow. And then the water goes up the xylem. Uh, up the xylem, down the phloem. All right. <clears throat> so those are physical adaptations of plants. Now, we're going to get into desert biome um, very soon. And desert plants have special adaptations, physical adaptations to help them survive because, as we know, the desert receives very little water precipitation. What do you know about plants in the desert, Ms. Hames, um, and their adaptations to survive with little water? Well, hmm. I know there's a lot of cactus in the desert. Do they have something special that helps them 
not need much water? Yes, they do. And I, you can see that I wrote cacti for plural. Mm. Um, just showing off my spelling skills here now that <laughs> I'm waking up. Cacti have long root systems. Oh. And as we've learned in uh, our classes, long root systems help to preserve water over long periods without rain. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Thinking about other uh, physical adaptations of plants or animals. Um, ooh, there's lots of animals um, that live in different biomes that can do something unique um, that helps them avoid predators. Do you know, I can't think of the word, Miss Hames. Do you know what I'm thinking of? It um, has to do with their appearance. Oh, I think it's what army people wear, camouflage. Ah, you're right. Ooh, and this is a fancy word, C-A-M-O-U-F-L-A-G-E, camouflage. That's definitely physical because it's a part of their shape or form, appearance or structure. All right, I think we have room um, to list maybe one or two more physical adaptations of plants or animals. Hmm, there's an animal um, that some of us see um, in our own um, grassland prairie biome here in North Texas, and then it's also a type of animal that lives in other biomes as well. Um, and it, I've seen it in some biomes where it has very large ears. Do you know what animal I'm talking hmm. about, Miss Haynes? Well, I think the animal you're talking about, some of them have long ears and live in hot areas, and some of them have short ears and live in colder areas. So since we're talking about the desert, I'm thinking the long ears, the rabbit, the jackrabbit. Ah, very nice. That's right, jackrabbit. Now, why would he need long ears? Does he need to listen more? Hmm, I wonder if he has good conversations with his jackrabbit hmm. friends. I wonder um, if, since it's very hot in his biome, he has to have long ears oh. so that heat can be released a little bit oh, better. Oh, gotcha. So, rabbit, long ears, release heat. Now you mentioned another type of rabbit that lives in a cooler area, and I wonder if we can add that here and close out oh, our physical sure. column. Um, sure, in the colder areas, you have the Arctic hare. Ah. Not like the hare on our head, but the <laughs> rabbit that's called a hare. I mean, it's another name for a rabbit is what I say. The Arctic hare. And what did you say was uh, unique about their ears? It has short ears. Ooh, okay. What's the por uh, purpose of that? Well, I'm thinking, you know, when I'm cold, I like to have something over my ears to keep the heat in. So I'm thinking the short ears keep the heat in. There's oh, not as much of them. That is a great So it adaptation. holds the heat in. So they conserve the heat, the body heat. Okay, whoops, got a little camera action here just to make sure y'all are awake. Let's hop over to our behavioral column. And remember, these are actions that enable survival. So that's behavior, actions, conduct. So sometimes animals do things just to help them be able to survive. All right, so I wonder, um, as especially as we talk about desert animals, it's so hot in the day. And I know mm. that um, you and I have talked about in the summertime in Texas, we try to stay inside during the day as much as we can. Yes, when it's hot, we stay in. And animals sometimes do the same thing. And they, they have to go outside, they have to go out sometime, but they choose to do it when it's cooler. And when would that be? Well, mm. if I compare it to our lives here, I know that's early in the morning or overnight. That's right. So things like, you know, you and I go shopping for food. Um, the desert animals would hunt at night because I don't think there's any grocery stores for jackrabbits. Mm. So they hunt at night. Is there anything else they might do at night that I'm missing? 
Maybe just most of their activities are going to be at night, and then they maybe they would sleep during the daytime. Ah, active at night, and then um, rest during day. And that's if it's very hot outside. Okay. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Animals um, do some other things. Um, they, ooh, I'm thinking of an animal um, that we try not to wake up if we happen upon oh. him or her in the in a forest or another biome. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's right on the tip of my hmm. tongue. Well, it's not when it's really hot, but I know when it gets cold, these things like to just take a big, long nap, and it's a big Bear ah, that likes to hibernate. Bears, hibernation. They hibernate. And part of the benefit for that is to conserve their energy, especially during um, winter months when food may not be as readily available. So, really clever of those bears. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's see. We've heard of uh, some animals that... Um, travel to different places, not travel for vacations like you and I might do, but they travel to different places um, to maybe avoid extreme temperature changes or to access food. Um, what is that word, that, that behavior hmm. that some animals do? You mean when they, like when they migrate to another yeah, area? Yeah, migration. Oh, okay. So some animals change their behavior but stay in their environment. And some of them say, we're out of here. We're, they just move. Exactly. Um, maybe one or two items more here, and then we'll get ready to close off. Let's see. Um, oh, what about when we go swimming um, in a lake or an ocean or a river, and you put your snorkel and your goggles on, and you go underwater, and you notice it's not just one fish, it's not just two but dozens, if not hundreds. Sounds like they're using the buddy system. Ah, okay, so um, group travel um, to help them deter their prey. In other words, to help their chances of surviving prey. Okay, anything else we can add to our behavioral here? We're t our time is... Coming yeah, I think we're about, it, about out of time. All right, so like we mentioned, you should have paused us as often as you needed to. Um, go back and re-watch this. Um, add anything here that we didn't have time to add just for the sake of your video. Um, and prepare for an assessment of your learning on this. Mm -hmm. And remember that physical and behavioral adaptations help the organisms survive their environment. All right, and I'm gonna just add one thing here. Organisms shape or form to enhance survival. Survival, enhance means to help um, or enable survival. So, that is it for episode five of Sassy Science. We're Oops, we're upside down. <laughs> All right, I'm Miss Hames. I'm Mrs. Green. We'll see you later.